Right, now I'm going to do the connection here into the MOSFET. This is where holding hands are quite useful. I can't be asked to go and get mine out there. I can't be asked to go and get my forceps out of the box. So I probably will singe my fingers a little bit, but I've got thick calluses on my hands from welding. Right, nearly there now. I've just got the motor wiring to do, so I'm going to take the motor out in a minute. Um, but what I've got to remember to do is the flyback diode goes in here. So when you've got the uh, two, when you've got this in place like that, the motor wiring will come past it. And then what we've got to do is between this pin and here, we have to put the flyback diode. So I'll get that in place and I'll put the uh, negative running to the motors and uh, then we've just got to work out where we're going to put that flyback diode in the line. Okay, so I've uh, done the flyback diode and as you can see I've just looped it up so that it's between the two uh, wires that go to the motor. So there's the main positive to the motor and then the negative and uh, then I've just got to put that third connection onto the MOSFET. Then I'm pretty much done with the FET. I'm ready to then switch out and start putting the final plugs together and doing the motor block, none of which takes very long to do. It's well worth uh, having all these plug-in components because it means that when you come to upgrade your blaster you can just unplug the components you want to keep. Now this MOSFET is powerful enough to run pretty much any motor with the exception of Wolverines. Um, it's, it'll easily take all the other ones. So you don't really need to worry if you've made this modular loom you can upgrade as you go. Now the same can be done for the Strife and I do for the Rapid Strike as well. All of my looms are made this way. But I thought the modulus deserved to be fully modular internally as well. So that was my logic behind this mod. I've made one of these already for somebody, but I forgot to film it. And access is always a problem, that's why you normally do the pins in order. Okay, nice and neat. Okay, you can see now that I've finished making the connections. I just made these last two connections here um, onto the uh, connector here, the Dean's connector, which will go to the motor block. And uh, the motor block wiring will loop back round over the top. And then uh, what I'll have is obviously the barrel will fit in up here. And you can see that it all fits nice and neat out the way. And then this will then have somewhere to go up into here. And uh, all I've got to do now is just place a wire tidy in there and just uh, hold the fit out of the way. So here's the wire tidy, it's just a little self-adhesive plastic block with a wire grip in it. You can get ones that take zip ties, they're quite useful too. So I'm just going to pop one of these onto the back of the FET and then stick it into place just to keep it out of the way. Obviously they do sometimes get warm FETs, these ones don't generally much. but. And just stick it to a convenient flat space, like that. Right, so you can see that that's all stuck down and uh, then I'm going to now remove the motor block and I've just got to do the motor block wiring, which again, standard motor block wiring and just two long tails to come out to go to the uh, motor output and then we're ready to test pretty much and I'll show you the next clever bit that I'm going to do. So I've prepared the battery tray so that you can have the uh, battery tray removable. So I've got a bit of a shell mod to do on that as well. Okay, I'm just removing the inductor board. Now this is for the uh, RF suppression, so it stops radio interference. I just thought I'd show you this cool tool that I'm using to do that. This is a solder sucker, and uh, these are designed for removing solder from PCBs. And uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to charge in there gung-ho and chop it all or break it coop style. I've done a video on how to remove these, um, but what I'll show you quickly is the solder sucker. So you prime it by pushing the rod forwards, and it basically then just liquefy the solder and then sucks the solder off the contact. So that's now cleared, I've done all the other ones. So now what I've got to do is I've just got to remove the um, 
negative contact which is goes onto the motor pins down here, goes onto the motor body. Now what you've got to watch out for is melting the end bells, right? Don't sit there for hours with your soldering iron, don't be stupid and keep your soldering iron out of the way when you're doing that. So take extra care on the motors, it's well worth having a solder sucker if you find one, they're a very useful tool. Right, on to the last two little bits. Um, I've wired the motor up, just done my usual uh, motor wiring there, and then I'm going to drop the motor onto there. The next thing you have to do is you have to make this little wire recess in here just a bit bigger, because obviously you've got fatter cable going through it now, so I'll just cut that a little bit bigger with my snips. It doesn't have to be mega neat, because you can't see any of it anyway. But this gives you room for it all to pass out underneath the barrel. So you can put that in like that. And then that can now travel nicely down this way and then loop back around the uh, rest of it. So I'm ready to install my barrel piece and just put that back up there like that. And then I can just screw that back in now quickly. And then pretty much all I've got to do is just connect at this end. I'm just going to solder. You'll see me in a minute. I'll solder up the uh, connector at this end like that so that it'll all sit in the front there. And then once it's all in there, then it's done. OK, I've made the final connection there. And uh, the only bit that remains now is to show you the last bit of this mod that's going to make it a modular modulus mod. And that is to connect a battery connector to the end of the battery pack. And uh, I've got a battery pack to test this with. I'll just quickly test the MOSFET and make sure it works. And hopefully I wired everything the right way. There you go. That's already sounding less weedy than a standard modulus, so you can see that's working very nicely. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to quickly attach a bit of battery cable to the end of there. Now this is the PTC or thermosistor. Lots of stupid modders go on about and bypass and loads of other crap. Keep it on, um, like I said in my previous video, if you're doing nothing else. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just have up here, the switch will come up, this will come up here, and uh, we'll be able to put the battery compartment back in. And then there'll be a wire up here, and that plug will sit up there. So there'll be a nice XT60 connector inside, which you'll be able to pull down to put a LiPo in, and you'll also be able to use the standard batteries. And I'm going to clip off this uh, little nub on the back here just to allow me a little bit more room, and then I'm going to use um, thinner cable for this because there's no point in using the thicker stuff. So I've just got to run. It's really easy to work out the battery polarity. If you look at the uh, battery alignment, if you have the uh, positive terminal, which is the sticking out one, uh, here with no spring, that's your positive terminal at this end. Now the only other thing that I've got to do before I finish up, and I'll come back and show you the finished mod, I'm going to attach the connector, the other end of an XT60 to the battery tray so that it goes and sits in there, and then I've got to just take this lip off here on both sides of the shell, so I'll just do that by shaving it off, and uh, you can use a Dremel or you can use uh, just a knife blade, just cut down on a long and shave it off, and then leave the end at one end so the battery pack has something to butt up against and then uh, it'll just sit in like that and that'll then allow you to have your wiring come through here and connect to your XT60 and then your cage you can just take the battery tray out when you want to put a lipo in so that's what I'm going to do and I'll show you the finished results of that right there's the finished battery box and uh, as you can see that will just slot into there like that and then that will connect to there like that and the whole lot will just fit up inside the uh, back of the blaster like that and that means that you can then have any kind of power supply you like and obviously if you want to put LiPo in you just pull that out and plug your LiPo in and most of the common um, 2S LiPos will fit in here. You can get 3S, 3S in. Uh, one of the options if you want to fit a bigger pack is you can take this section out here, this little support which is there to hold the battery tray in place. If you don't mind that being a little bit looser when you fit the battery tray, that allows you to have a bit more room for some of the 3S hybrid packs. Um, if you decide to change the motors. Obviously this one's staying on stock motors. Um, all I have to do now is just literally put the shell halves back together and then I'll show you that battery pack going in and then that is your modular modulus. Okay, so there's the finished mod and you can see that from the outside that now looks like a perfectly normal modulus and uh, I'll just demonstrate the uh, modular build. So I've got a set of standard rechargeable AAs in there and then obviously that will now fit up inside there. It's always a bit of a squeeze getting the wiring in. So there you go, and then now if I want to take those out, out they come, and obviously that will now run if I want, that will run 2S LiPo as well, 
you can get a number of different packs. This one I suspect may be a tiny bit large, but I've not tried it in here, so we'll have a look. Should go in, it fits in my Gin Urso. There you go, 2S Lipo. And obviously, uh, if you want to run IMRs, then you'll see that, that was so bad, pulling on the wires of the XT60. Don't do that, pull the connector, not the wires. Uh, you can also put IMR in there. So there you have it, fully modular modulus. That's now ready for expansion later if you wanted to swap motors for Michel 2.0s or for Hyperions or for whatever motors you like. Uh, you'd be able to go and put those in there and the rest of that build will handle all of that quite happily. You don't have to worry about the micro switch because the MOSFET is there. You don't have to worry about getting stuff in the grip, although it'd be really nice if somebody made a cool grip insert for this grip because it's the least comfortable grip in the entire range. I hate the grip on the modulus. That's its only fault. So there you have it, a fully modular modulus.